Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Here we go again another video in a very short period of time to talk about Android 13 Developer Preview 1. I have it installed on my Pixel 5 and I will show you how it looks side by side with Android 12L Beta 3 installed on my Pixel 6 Pro. Before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel to get notified about my upcoming videos and shortly I will release Google Apps Updates episode and it has a lot of interesting changes. And now let's take a look at Android 13 Developer Preview 1. On the left I have my 6 Pro running Android 12L Beta 3 which is the closest version to Android 13 Developer Preview 1 running on my Pixel 5 and the first change is in the lock screen. When you swipe up to unlock the phone using the keypad, you will see the numbers are back again to the bottom instead of being at the top like Android 12L. The second change is the new profile switcher in case you have multiple users on the device, but unfortunately it's not activated by default and I couldn't find a way to show you how it looks, but I have a separate chapter talking about all the upcoming features that we might see in the future builds of Android 13. Let's move on to the home screen and the first change is the redesigned home screen overlay menu with the wallpaper picker that we first got with Android 12L. It's also part of Android 13 which makes sense. Another change I noticed in the wallpaper and the style app and I didn't mention it before. When you go inside any of the wallpaper categories you will see this button that will allow you to set a daily wallpaper automatically. This button now looks different in Android 12L and Android 13 compared to the stable version of Android. 12. All the other changes in the home screen are exactly the same as Android 12L Beta 3 which I already covered in my previous video that you can see its link now on the screen. Now let's move on to the notifications shade and the quick settings area. Android 13 is following the same design language of 12L. We see the same centered no notifications text. The tiles are showing the same pop-up cards but there are some minor tweaks. The first one is in the screen recording card. As you see here Android 13 includes the show touches on screen toggle which was missing from 12L. The quick settings also got three new tiles that didn't exist before. The first one is the color correction toggle. The second one is for the one handed mode that you can toggle on or off. And finally there is a new shortcut for the QR code scanner but unfortunately it's grayed out and I tried some ADB commands to activate the feature but it didn't work. And as per Mishar Rahman, we might see in the future a new toggle under the lock screen settings that will allow us to access the QR code scanner from the lock screen, but it's not yet available in this build. The media controls also got some tweaks with Android 13. The first one is in the media output switcher. As you see here, it says this phone in a set of phone speaker. And when you tap on it, you will see some differences. First, the volume controls are much thicker and there is a tick sign next to the device that's currently playing the media. However, in Android 12 L and also the stable version of Android 12, you won't see this tech sign anywhere. And the white spaces between the devices is now smaller, which makes the card a little bit more compact compared to the previous versions. You will also notice the app icon is now showing in Android 13, which wasn't the case before. And finally, the album art is bigger. Back to the media controls itself, and you will see thicker buttons compared to the previous version. And when I expand the media controls, as you see, the shortcuts are different. Here I have the repeat and shuffle instead of the like and dislike with the same app which is YouTube Music. Other apps might also show you different shortcuts with Android 13. So this is everything new I wanted to show you in the notifications shade and the quick settings. And now let's move on to the picture in picture window. With Android 13, Google added the quick shortcut to start a split screen view from the picture in picture window like we saw with Android 12L. But after installing beta 3, this feature is gone and it's now back again with Android 13. So I'm not sure if Google decided to delay it to Android 13 or we'll see it back again with 12L. Now let me show you a lot of differences I spotted under settings and I will start with uh, notifications. When you go to wireless emergency alerts, here on 12L you will see warning alerts, public safety, while here you will see extreme threats, severe, amber, and test alerts. Also, you can activate the vibration for these alerts, which is not the case with the 12L. You can also switch off all alerts at once using this toggle, which doesn't exist in the previous version. There are also other tweaks under notifications and then do not disturb and then people. You will see here the conversations menu item is no longer showing, but when you go inside messages, you will see it right here. And when I go inside messages on both, as you see here in the previous versions, we have radio buttons to only select one item at a time. 
But with Android 13, we have a check boxes, which means we can select multiple options. So for example, I can choose start contacts with the priority conversations at the same time, but I cannot choose contacts and start contacts at the same time because it doesn't make sense. Also, when you tap on any one, all the text will be removed from the other options, same as none. Next, the battery. And now when you go to battery usage, you will have the option to filter the results by tapping on each bar on the graph like this. This feature was only exclusive to the Pixel 6 models, but after installing Android 13 on my Pixel 5, it's now available. Next, sound and vibration. And the first change is under vibration and haptics. As you see here, on 12L, I have one toggle to disable all the vibration and haptics, which is no longer the case with Android 13. Also, the vibrate for calls menu item is now gone, and we have a new toggle here to activate the gradual ringing, and instead of going into a separate page and activate it from here. Also, each slider got its own header, and instead of merging all of them under the same category, which is vibration and haptic strength, here we have calls, we have notification and alarms, and interactive haptics. Last but not least, when you activate the silent mode, as you see, the vibration and haptics now have an info icon next to them on both versions, saying that vibration and haptics are not available. The only difference here, the system navigation haptics are still working even if you are on silent mode, which is not the case with Android 13. That will also stop the haptic feedback when you try to unlock the phone using the keypad, in addition to the charging vibration. Next, the privacy. And now when you go to privacy dashboard and then expand all the permissions, you will see a new one here called notifications that didn't exist before. Now let's talk about the differences under system settings. And the first one I'm going to choose here is gestures. When you go to quick tap, now you have the option to activate the flashlight using the double tap on the back of your phone. Under system navigation, the three buttons navigation got a new gear icon next to it, which will allow you to stop Google Assistant from being invoked by tapping and holding on the home button. Under system and then multiple users and then guest, now you can choose what apps to install on the guest user by activating the toggle next to each app, which wasn't the case before. Now let me show you some of the new changes we should expect in the future with Android 13. And the first one is the new profile switcher from the lock screen. As per Mesha Rahman, this is how it should look like. You should see your profile picture at the top and the name of the user uh, in this drop down menu. And when you tap on it, you should see all the users you have so you can quickly switch between them. The second change is the new system wide photos picker. This is a quick video showing how it looks. It looks very similar to the iOS version. At the top, you have two tabs, one for photos and one for albums. And you can also multi select photos from here. And when you tap on your selections, you will see this banner at the bottom showing the number of photos selected, and you can also deselect all of them. We should also expect a new feature called Media Tap to Transfer. This feature should allow you to transfer the media from your phone to other devices by making your phone closer to the other device. And you should see some sort of a bubble at the top telling you to move closer to play your media on another device. And here it says playing on test device and so on and so forth. And this is very similar also to an iOS feature we saw before with the home pods. With Android 13, developers are also able to create themed icons like Google Apps. So once you activate the feature, all your icons should be matching the same design and instead of having this kind of mix. Change number five is the ability to choose a specific language for each app you have on your phone or in other words, per app language. And we should see a new menu item under language and input. As you see here, it's called app languages. And from here, you should be able to change that language for a specific apps instead of matching your system wide language. Privacy dashboard might also support up to seven days worth of access data. As you see here, it says seven days. And we should see a menu at the top right corner to switch between seven days and the 24 hours. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Android 13 developer preview one. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything and stay tuned for my upcoming Google Apps updates episode and see you the next video.